Hello, everyone. <laughs> it's been a while since my last presentation, so I'm so happy to have a presentation again about navigation and routing. This might be a little bit advanced topic because uh, I'm not going through the uh, packages. I've been through the packages last week. Mm, I didn't have a, like, a good result like uh, making all of the scenario that uh, I might uh, face into the application. Like, let me show you how many issues right now there is for the Gooter, Go router. Like, there are many, like, they haven't touched for two years. So I'm not going through this, uh, this package. This package is uh, suggested by Flutter, but it's not in a good situation right now. I don't know if they have a really good plan to make this package better or not. But let's uh, just use the API for at the moment. It's been a two years, but uh, I think the better option is the API only. So uh, interrupt me anytime if you have any question. We don't need to finish this uh, presentation. I, I know it's, it's a long presentation. It might be much harder for you. So interrupt me. Just we want to learn as much as possible here. Any classes or API, you might have a question. Yes? <laughs> yeah, yeah, interrupt. Yeah, that's uh, like a, we have more time because I'm the second one. <laughs> you said API only, you mean just the Navigator 2 API? Uh, yes, Navigator 2. Yes. Cool. It's possible to do everything with the API. Uh, I did everything that we might have like for the web version. So let's go through the navigator too. Yes? Uh, why don't you write uh, Go Router? Um, I tested Go Router uh, two weeks ago. Like guys told me like Go, go Router, use Go Router. But uh, there are many issues. Like as soon as I started to have a, like a situation, we're going to the situation later, what situation we might incur, occur, like for the web application mostly. And those were not handled, like and there was a, like existing issue in GitHub rep repository, you can go check them all. But there are a lot and no one touched them right now. And it's like not maintainable like for at the moment, I, I don't know why but it's a really big issue for the web application right now. I, I didn't uh, look all of them, uh, but let's go for the moment. Okay, routing is, uh, we call the each screen on the application as a root for the moment, and each screen obviously is widget in Flutter, so everything is widget. We have most of, I mean, many uh, screens for sure in our application, not one screen, and we might we want to like uh, navigate between them or popping them or uh, going back to the first page or anything we might have. Like this example is like a shopping cart; it goes to pages, just for the showing. Declarative SI and imperative SI is the way of coding which Flutter uh, present a declar uh, declarative one. Declarative is the uh, a style that you just need to give the framework an estate. And you don't need to transit the between, have it like a transition between the first estate to the second one. You just need to give the uh, current, uh, current uh, a state to the framework, and framework does everything by your by itself. Flutter is a declarative one. Simply just uh, call the set a set, and you can change the change the application based on your variables or anything. For example, here we have a, like a two way. That's a Flutter example that we want to uh, just change the color and add another widget here. And in the imperative way, you need to call some function to do that, like B set color to the red and clear the children and, and turn to the view tree, view C. And this is the imperative way. And for the declarative, you just need to 
uh, specify ev every properties, and then you just need to call the set essay to go to the red, uh, red uh, color or anything that you have for the state. Imperative navigation is the old navigation that Flutter you all have everyone knows. Like you just need to. This one is for the push name, like uh, pushing navigation with the name. You just uh, have to in the Material app. You just need to declare your uh, routings, like a login page, a register page, or anything you have in the first uh, widget Material app and then just uh, call the API push name to the login and you can change a user to, uh, to the login page. Just is easy and it's really a straightforward. And if you want just to get back the user to the splash screen, just you need to call the pop API. This is going to be our example page that uh, we have in the future. We have a splash screen, and we have a login, register, email verification, and the home and report. Just simple, and uh, the the scenario is something like this: if you are reg if the user has already logged in, go straight to the home page, and if not, go to the login or the register. If the uh, if the user was verified by the email verification, go to the home, and if not go to the email verification, and then go to the home. And in our home page, we have a report, just a, a page, just make a report, and just as simple as this. And if you want to, you can pop up to the home page. We're going to the, this example later. Uh, I'm going to make a, as a Go router, I'm going to make a, like expression, like a Go for the only situation that the user put the URL into the browser and want to go to your web application. Like, for example, I want to go straight, in this example, I want to go straight to the report page. And this is only can happen in the web browser. So user cannot go to the, directly go to the report page in the mobile app or desktop app because there is no, I mean, uh, availability to put the URL. So the go in, in here it means like go directly to the page. Just that easy. We have limitation for this navigation in uh, Flutter. The first one is like a, a stack based on the app set. We have a, like a stack of the pages whenever we push or pop. And Flutter holds this a stack of the pages. Like, and whenever you pop, it removes the last one. And whenever you push, it push to the stack of the pages. So this stack of the pages is really hard to like uh, change it based on the app state. For example, we have a authentication. We want to just cut the user when the authentication is finished. So it's really difficult to handle all of this situation at once for the because you can access the previous uh, number three removing a root underneath in the stack. So if we want to just change one stack. Yeah, uh, like a, uh, I don't know. Uh, we have a, like a ten a stack of the screen, and we want to just remove the fifth or sixth. We can do that in the uh, imperative way. If we haven't, uh, we have a no stack. For example, if we want to directly go to the reports page and uh, we want to uh, just show some stack before report. For example, we have a home page before reports page. So we cannot show this stack into the user based on the push name, like a navigator one, because if you use the push name, it just go to the report page and there's no stack. So you cannot even have a result of this page. For example, if the report has successful, go back to the show the user some a snack bar or something. So there is no result data in the Go situation. And the forward and backward is not consistent in the, these are the documentation of Flutter. It's not consistent in the browser. So there is no forward for the push name at the moment. And you have to uh, pass the essay to the browser. That's the only way we can have this with uh, some new API that we're going to uh, through. 
up to now, any question? This is like a uh, uh, imperative, imperative way. I al 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 always like mistake like imperative and declarative. So if you have any question for the imperative, we're going to the declarative right now. Okay. Navigator 2 is the solution to handle all of the situation. What situation we have? Like the all of the scenario that we might have in our application or web application. For, uh, first one is the push and pop. Obviously, you'd want to just push and pop a screen to the, uh, for the user. Go directly to the root, which has, you can do it with the, with the push name, but it's uh, difficult to have a stack. Uh, authentication, like to change the uh, stack before the uh, report page or any uh, stack. These are all of the scenario that we might have like change a stack base based on the root state. Send the argument to the pages, browser back and forward, and send back the result data uh, for two situation. Whenever you push or whenever the user come directly to your page. So this is all, also we're going to go through all of this one, all of the scenario. And 404 page for, I mean, not found any screen that you have. Uh, you can scan this QR code and you can see one example, like uh, there's a sample that I made with the gallery, like uh, it's a simple, like you have uh, some images and you just go through the images and the albums and just go back and you can test it out. Uh, let me show you, we are going to together. Uh, this is an example I made like two years ago, but we have another example just I made some weeks ago. Uh, this is our base uh, page, uh, our base URL, like there is nothing. This is like a, um, uh, for the domain. And in each album, we have a, like a album and uh, with the hash code that represents a uh, uh, some data, I turn this hash to the some data. Uh, and then if you go to the each, each image, you have a, like a view and with the another hash which has a data. Uh, and this is really simple, just uh, up to now you can just play with the back and forward and you can see there is a nice uh, animation of hero that you can see also you can put the custom uh, widgets for the transition or anything. And uh, you can just use the back and forward and it's really consistent with the back bottom here. These two back are different. One of them is for the framework and one of them for the browser. And we also have, uh, we might discuss about this later. And uh, if, for example, if I want to go directly from the a URL to this image, it goes to the URL. And for the here, we don't have any page before, so if I hit the back, it goes to this page, obviously. But if I hit this back button, it goes to the S stack that we made with Flutter. So everything is handled, like we have a stack uh, before this image, which is the album. And if you hit again this, uh, this back bottom, it goes directly to the previous album. This is a really simple application. Uh, where were we? So we are going to the uh, new APIs that Flutter introduced two years ago. Uh, router widget is the widget for the, I mean, listening to the information that comes from the operating system, like a back or forward button, or any intent come from another application to your application intent, like a, like Android name that comes to your application. Initial route provided uh, by the app, uh, when the app starts and the notification that user hits the back button. So uh, everything's uh, coming from the router widget that you have, to, uh, you have to just override the properties and the function that it has to make your own application. 
And we have another widget, Navigator widget, which has three main properties, pages that you show all pages that you want to show to the user. And in these pages is the main properties that you have to work on. The pages, you, you make your stacks of the pages here, or if you want to show for a for the like our example, we have a, like a image of the and you want to show the image and the album beneath them. You have to handle each situation here. And initial route and the pop page. And just uh, be careful. Pop page is important one also here because there is no pop when you want to have a navigator too. Just you have to handle each pop when you have. So you have to override this method. And this this diagram, yes. You can uh, call the pop uh, directly for the framework, but you need to handle the situation. Nothing's uh, happening in the Flutter because you are overriding the uh, APIs. You're saying that the, this, uh, the pop API does not handle on pop. If you use the Navigator 2, it handles the framework within the framework, but. For example, if you hand, want to handle the back bottom, you need to handle override this method to handle the pop. What's the default? The default uh, is like going back to the, I mean, if you have a stack, it removes the stack. It the whole stack. Yes. But in the browser, it doesn't work. Uh, here we have a diagram of uh, a simple application. Uh, and the navigator tool is simple as this, <laughs> not that much simple. But you have your application, you have a router, navigator, and each route. And for example, a user tapped by, I mean, um, tapped any pages, want to uh, back or go forward or something. Uh, you have an app state, which is a change notifier uh, class, or you want to use block or anything. You, you have uh, to uh, handle this situation in your app state, and it notifies the router, and router reveals the pages and show the new route. It's so simple, but you have to be careful of each situation. Router information parser is also uh, another class for the navigator too. This is only a class that uh, interact with the operating system, which has a it has a, like a two main objects URI, URI, uh, URI and the state. So you can pass the state to the to the browser and give the state whenever the browser gives you a URI. So you have the URI and the serialized. This should be serialized. You can pass any state to the like uh, unserialized uh, to the router. So for our states, we have a, like a root history, like a browser state we call, and we have a authentication and not verified. And this is like two main things that we want to pass for each uh, transition. And you can pass for the, our example, you, pa you can pass the gallery, which is the album of the page, album of the images. And this is also serializable, and the media, which is the image that you want to show, and you have to write the to JSON and the from JSON method. Another class is the root delegate, which is uh, connects everything together, and you have to override this method and put your navigator here, which has the pages, and you have to override the pages and the pop pages, and put your pages here. That's uh, base, uh, an important class that you have to override. Uh, this is also a diagram by Flutter, which shows you the whole situation of Navigator 2. This is like our operating system, which, for example, a back button press, and it goes to the framework, which has a root, uh, root information parser class that we discussed before. And for each uh, like initial root or intent that comes from the OS, it goes to these classes. And uh, so from here, just it's everything is just a parser and the URL, URL that comes from the OS. And for example, if you go to the application from that page, from that URL, 
there is nothing to do here. So this one doesn't, we don't need to work on this side. We go to this side that which, has, which is our application. Our application has a routers and we need to rebuild based on the, based on the user changes, like it goes to the, another page or go back to the previous page and we just need to work on this site for the application. Our example is app structure. I, mean, I added some other stuff here. We, have, we, all, we, we use the same screens as before just uh, to let you know that, for example, here we have a reports page. We want to get back a result. The result could be null and to the home page. And here, if is verified, goes to this page, and if is uh, is authenticated, go to that pages. And we also want to separate our routing system, which is inner router and uh, outer router. Uh, using two uh, router has some benefit, which we discuss later. Uh, we call nested routers. And we keep the root history as this page for, for only these two pages because we want to keep it as simple. And uh, these are, are only the one pages. It, if it goes back, go back, uh, exit the application. So only we, we need to push uh, the report page on the home page. So let's see the code. Just code is the important one here. So. We want to see the routes and all of the classes that we discussed. Uh, I, taught, uh, I told you we use the nested routes. Nested routes is really benefit, like um, whenever you want to add the widget on all nested routes or uh, uh, for the bottom app bar or navigation bar, it only uh, works with the nested route and for the stack uh, of the views above. It's, it really depends, but using nested root is uh, critical for some situation. So here we have our roots. Is it uh, the size is good? Let me. Is it better? Okay. We have to define our roots in a class we call roots. We have a base app roots which. Uh, extends from the root setting. Root setting is come from Flutter, which has uh, the two options that you already know, the name and the argument. The name is the name of the root, and the argument is the object that you want to pass for the data to the screen. And we just extend from this base app root. Our roots, just defined uh, here, only uh, you just need to uh, put the root name. I put it as a static because I don't want to just, uh, a, it doesn't change or anything, just I want to use it as a static function. And also here, uh, I didn't, uh, when I, whenever I, well, when I was like uh, making this routing, just I didn't know what, which, which is the best way, but uh, I want to keep the root history as a, as a properties because I want to know which, uh, which uh, root has the S story before. For example, these are, are, they don't have any root history, like they are the single pages. But for our report example, reports page, we have uh, the, the root, which is our home page, and the root name uh, and the reports uh, page. So just we keep the routing history here. Uh, Go router made this simple, so if you, I, I didn't go through the documentation. This uh, this side of the Go router was easy. Just you need to put some. Uh, you need to also add the builder of the Go router to um, make this on our own. But it turns to this obviously. Uh, for example, if, I if the user just copy paste the report page, I want to show the home page before the report page. If I don't, as a stack, 
So if I, the user go directly to the root page, I want to show the user that there is a stack before the, this root page. Well, this is your stack, right? This is yes, this is my stack. Ah, okay. So uh, just for this situation that the user directly go to the report page from the browser, we need the stack here. Um, you can handle without any uh, just this in, into the API, but it's simple to do it here. And the S state that we have, that I told you, the app state is the change notifier class, which uh, notifies the app router based on, uh, based on the S state and the current route. So we just uh, have a, our base app route, which we defined here, current route, and, uh, and the deserializable uh, uh, S state, browser S state, we want to pass to the browsers. And another properties we have is the, where is it? Ah, uh, here, pop result. Uh, we define a completer which uh, is useful for giving the previous stack, previous page, a result of the current stack. It's really difficult, for example, reports page, the user did it everything and it submitted successfully. We complement, we, uh, we complete this pop results later on to show the home page that the user did everything right. Also, we discuss about this later. And uh, an inherited uh, notifier, which we want to use it uh, for, for our application anywhere. And also, I made some extension, which uh, we call the Go here <laughs> as a Go router. <laughs> and the push and the pop our own. So uh, our pushing system, uh, our, our goal is uh, straightforward, just we need to uh, push this, uh, this page uh, as a first page and there's nothing beneath and there's no stack here, but uh, our pushing system is like uh, we add the, add the page under, uh, I mean top of the stack. Also, let's see the, our, our models here also. Browser estates. Can yes? Can you go back to the push again? Uh, yeah, uh, we use the built, uh, built value. Uh, do you, are you, you have a question about the built here? There is nothing you can use from Flutter because you are overriding these APIs. So you put the APIs that you override to the main material app. Let me show you here our main uh, material app. You just uh, give the framework that our, our app has its own root information, parser and delegate and everything and you pass them here, router delegate and router information parser. So the default navigator doesn't work. So there is not navigator dot of context. It doesn't work as it's supposed to work. You just need to override everything here and push and put it as a material app. Uh, so the push button, the push for, um, from framework doesn't work, obviously, because you put your, yeah. And we use the, uh, I told you we use uh, built value for the frame, for the modelizing because it's so easy to compare to, to lease. If we don't use the built value, it's, we need to do some boiler, boiler plate for the lease, our browser estate. And just here, we just rebuild and add the uh, uh, current name to the browser estate and we change the current route. And afterwards, uh, if we have any result from that page, we, we just return the future of the pop result here. It's, same as, it's exactly the same as the push, of, push method of the framework. 
Uh, these are the methods for our, I mean, basic methods for our uh, application. And here also we have authentication, which any time our authentication, I'm going to show you whenever authentication is um, finished. So we just put the user to the login page. This is our root essay and parser is simple. We don't touch it anymore. We just make it first time and it's coming from the frame, uh, from the browser, just uh, gives you the URI and the uh, state, which has the root information dot state, and uh, you consider as a, as a JSON, and uh, you get this state from the browser and turn it to the, your model. So our model is the browser set, and you convert this uh, JSON to your models. Here, uh, we just have uh, some if and else, which, uh, for example, if that's the first page, we just go show the user, I mean, we put the user, we put the, we put the routing history uh, and the browser state. Routing history is the root page, like we add the current route to the, to the history of we have. Uh, this method is just if there is uh, nothing, I mean, if, Add, add this route to the browser history if it's not exist before. So it's just a simple uh, method, just we didn't want to like, duplicate method, duplicate the route. And uh, whenever the route is more than the basic uh, slash, we just go through the first, uh, first uh, variable, first uh, variable of the list. And here I use some uh, recourse for the new time, I mean for the first time, so I was happy, and the new switch case. So uh, here we just uh, compare the first element of our past segment, which is this side, which can be login, which can be register or any email ver verification, and the report mm -hmm. here. And uh, each uh, switch, if there is, uh, I mean, case for that, go to the, I mean, show the current route as the login route, and uh, put the put the login to to the root history, and uh, we just uh, for only report page, we add two things. Like the first one uh, is the URI coming from the, for example, if you have a report and something here, like uh, an ID of the report, we just uh, pass if the length was b more than one, we just pass the first segment of this uh, URI to the report page, which uh, we, uh, we just uh, made it here, and the report ID is here, and you just pass the report ID. If you don't have a report ID, just don't pass it, and it's just uh, optional. And the uh, uh, root history, which here is only that we define first, is only here is the home page and the reports page. And whenever you couldn't find anything, go to the unknown page, which is 404. And here, uh, there is nothing else, just uh, whenever you have new root, just put the new root here, and voila, you're good to go, and you don't need to do anything else. And the other two uh, classes is outer router. I discussed we have a, like a two routers here, a nested routers. And also, this is extend from change notifier that we defined as our root set. If anything changes here, this class will be rebuilt. So this is the most important class that handles everything. We extend from change notifier, and whenever any changes happen in our root essays, it notifies this class, and it rebuilds itself. So whenever we dispose this, uh, navigate, this uh, delegate, we just remove the listener from notification, from the app state, and uh, the main, the main method is our build method, which we put everything here. Our main method, uh, build method, we have a browser state uh, that comes from the parser, yes? Yeah, 
yeah, you have every query is here. Just you just need to have an example like uh, here. Uh, I have a, like if I have a, like a length of uh, more than one, go to this and I get this is the URI. Just you have the query, you can get the query. I think there is something for the query. Uh, there is many other things that you can uh, get from here. I think query, yes, it's here. Yes, you need to just add the, I mean, get the query from the URI. This is like a simple URI that you pass like a H HTTP. Post? There is no post. You just have a URL. URL. The URL contains like all the space. Yeah. Technically, it's possible. You can browser and you can post here as well. Here it is. No, I mean, technically, it's possible. That's what I said. Okay, let's go through this build method. So, as I mentioned, we have our browser state, we have our uh, root history and uh, we do everything here. Uh, and uh, we have authentication here. Also, we need to authentify the user if there is no authentication and just uh, log out. We have a, a root asset, which uh, the scope that I talk is an inherited widget. We, you just need to pass the state to the inherited widget. And whenever there is a changes, it, this, this one will be rebuilt. And you have a navigator. It's important to pass the navigator key because you can't have a, some navigator at the same time in your same uh, route. And just you just put the, your routing situation here. Uh, just you need to compare any route which which is unknown route, which can be anything else. And you pass your page here finally. <laughs> so our page is uh, comp, uh, it's just uh, you need to pass the pages here. And also the pages cannot be empty. If you go to the framework, it says like you have to give me at least one pages. So you need to just, you can give many pages as you want. You can here change any pages, change any stack because you have all of the power here, <laughs> not framework. So you have to just compare anything you want. So here we have some situation. For example, first of all, if there is no root, go to the 404. And if there is a root for that, Go, for example, register page, and and you have to put if, if this is is un, un, unauthenticated. Um, whenever there is uh, no authentication for the user, uh, the first page that we show is the register page. So if the root and the root is the same, it goes to the register page. But if the user wants to go to the login page, and if again was unauthenticated, go to the login page. And also we put the or here if the user was unauthenticated. So it doesn't go further, just it shows the, it shows the login page and it doesn't go to the else. And anything else, go to the, our second router, which is uh, our inner router. And also we have a custom app page. This is also another issue for the Go router. The custom app pages like is really difficult to implement. Just we have a, like a nice animation you can put for the web, uh, and you can differentiate for the web or the other things. So we don't go through this because it doesn't make it difficult. And uh, here uh, we go to the our second uh, router, which is here. And we don't want to just interfere any pop because we don't have any stack here. If there is only one stack, we don't want to just override the pop. Just uh, called, uh, I mean, just turn the pop uh, to the framework. 
But here we have a stack, we have some other things. Let me. Uh, and also, this is as same as the outer router, just is extend from change notifier. And if there is any changes, it rebuilds this one. We have OS guard here, which are our uh, widgets, yes. Approach shell is the holder of the, I didn't want to go to this one because doesn't make, didn't want to make it harder. And here is also, it's a, just a simple widget, just uh, the only thing here uh, we just we need to override is like a back bottom dispatcher uh, is a, is a, as I told you, the diagram. We need to give, uh, tell the framework the back button uh, which uh, router has the priority. If you have a router. Yes, if you have a nested router. So the only thing it does here is just uh, giving it the back, uh, the priority to the back button. And anything else is just a delegation and everything you just need to pass. Uh, so this, uh, let's go to the inner router first. Our OS guard is the guard for the authentication. And we have a block that which listen to the authentication. If there is any authentication happens, so uh, for example, if the user is authenticated and the email is verified, uh, we go directly to the root app and authentication, everything we pass the false. Uh, and uh, if the user was not verified, just uh, is not verified though, we put as a true. And anything if happens as a failure, like there is an authentication issue or unauthenticated user, uh, we just go directly to the login page. It's a simple uh, widget that we can handle the situation. And whenever we are uh, in an unknown situation, we just listen. This is a virus. We just listen to the app changes. And uh, after app changes, we have the listener. We can handle the situation. And here also, we again, we just need to uh, declare our routing system and any pages that we want. If the first one is uh, email verification, if the email, uh, the routes was email verified, go to the, that page. And if it's not verified, again, there is a or, go to that page too. It doesn't go to the else if the user was not verified. And also here we have our main uh, and the important example. Uh, we have a four here for our root history. And for each root history, we want to show the user any page. If also from the report page, I go to another page and I, I add it to the routing history, I have a four, so it shows any page that we have in the root history. And in our root history, if the page was uh, like a home page, go to the, we call here root page, but our root page is our home page, is just here. And uh, if it wasn't root page, go to the reports page. And it's simple, and we pass the report ID here. And in our unpop page is important here because we want to handle the situation. Whenever the report goes back, you hit the back button or you hit the uh, pop. And here, just if the, if the user did pop, uh, didn't pop, uh, go return false, and this is uh, the routing. Just rebuild it, rebuild the browser history, and remove the last one from the history. And if is also important if you want if you have any result from the history that you have, <laughs> just complete the pop results <laughs> and then uh, give it to the user. I don't have many time, so <laughs> I don't have much time. I'm going to do the example. So this is our login page. Let me make it bigger. Uh, okay, this is, uh, for example, if I hit this button, go to the register, 
and uh, I can use the back button here and just log in. So here also, if the user authenticated, we don't handle anything. He just listen to the user and the block that I showed you in OSCAR. If he hit that button, it automatically do everything in our OSCAR. And uh, if we go to the root page, report page, we have the stack here. So we have the back button. I didn't put the back button. Flutter did it itself because it has a stack. And if I hit, uh, and this is the ID. Uh, I wanted to show you the argument because we don't have time. Uh, this is come. This come from the report ID. Come from the previous page, and we had we pass the ID to the root. And if we hit that button, it gives you the result to the that that I told you the unpub page, and it complement complete the result, and it shows you the home page. Yeah, just I want to show you the the results that we get uh, in our home page. Uh, where is it? In our own home page, uh, the results uh, uh, here, where is it? Uh, here. Uh, if we push the, it's as same as the push method from the framework. We just await our push. We, this is our push uh, method. Just we just need to await and just if there is a result, uh, just show the a successful message, and this is for the pushing situation. And if we don't have any push, like the user comes directly from the browser, it goes to the reports. We have the situation here. We have another status for the in our block, which is home uh, a snack bar status, which is initial. Uh, we read the we read the uh, uh, a snack uh, show a snack bar and just uh, we read the pop result and put it to the our method in our block, which is if the result is complement is completed, and in uh, get the result from the future and uh, our result just show the user to the which is the home. Uh, a snack bar status, which shows you the su successful message. So if I go directly to the reports page, let me show you. If I go directly to the reports page, uh, we didn't have, this is the, uh, like a default report ID. And if, and it goes directly to the reports page. And if I hit this button, uh, we have a, a snack bar, which uh, I told you, like it goes to this method and shows the snack bar from the unpop method that we defined here. That uh, is just complete uh, the result. All the situation I think it has covered and there is nothing if you find anything, <laughs> any situation that is not covered with the navigation one. Sorry? Deep links, um, uh, what do you mean? Like, uh, you know, uh, it's almost the same thing, except in mobile, when you have, uh, for example, a specific method that you want to flag from another app to your app, then you have those deep links that will trace those specific apps. So it's the same thing as you want to work on the reports. I think uh, deep link I handle with, uh, with the dynamic link. And so Uh, I don't know, but it does work for, yeah, you just need to define the, uh, the deep link in our iOS and uh, Android, and I don't think that's, there's like, because Flutter, the parse router that I told you, it gives you the information of the URI when there is a deep link, and you, can handle the situation. For the email verification, I didn't show you because we didn't have time. I used the deep link to go directly to the application and it handles the situation. If we have time, we can. <laughs> <laughs> Any question? So essentially, so yes, yes. Yourself, 
by the, the router or the navigator. So you, you are combining both imperative and declarative quote unquote in your that's cool because in, in for example in some other packets there's only one Yes. That's a, another issue of the Go router. You, you can't handle all of the situation, but you can handle each situation here on your own because you can uh, alter anything here. So the only time you use like a fully declarative approach is when you navigate by the URL. Correct. Otherwise, it's declarative. Yeah. And the most important, I mean, it depends on your situation. For example, if you have a mobile application and you want to just all change the stack beneath your, it, ha it happens rarely, but if you have this situation, it's good to have a navigator too. But also it depends on, uh, if you don't have a web, uh, Flutter web, it's almost, you, need, you don't need to have this, yes. And these are the, I had a medium for this and uh, uh, all of the explanation. You can just go medium.yazi.dev or you can have the, uh, you can have the source code of the gallery. The, this example was not public but because it's for another project. But the gallery is public, you can check it there. And thank you so much for.